All right, so it's been a long and exhausting day, but we got all 46 of our meat birds processed plus five um, extra roosters that we had processed. Um, we had some great help, great friends over. Now I'm back up at the kitchen and I'm going to take all of my neck meat, neck bones, and um, any of the trimmings and I'm going to roast them in the oven at 400 degrees for probably about 45 minutes, maybe an hour. I want them to kind of get golden and crispy so it may be a little over an hour. I'm just gonna watch them and see how they turn out. Um, I'm gonna season them up with a little bit of salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, peppercorns, and then I'm going to take all of that, put it into a big stock pot, and boil it down for about 24 hours, make some really nice chicken stock that we can get canned. So here are, so here are the pans of neck bones. And this is what I'm gonna use to season them. Garlic powder, black peppercorns, onion powder, and salt. And we'll just get those roasted. I'll show you when we're done. Okay, so we got all of our roasted chicken necks into a pot. I've put about two and a half gallons of water over them. Put a few celery stalks. Um, the peppercorns that you see here at the top were actually roasted with the chicken necks. I roasted all of my chicken necks for an hour and 15 minutes at 400 degrees. Then we put them into this pot and covered them with two and a half gallons of water. I'm going to allow this to boil very, very slowly for about 24 hours to get a really rich chicken stock. We did add probably about a fourth a cup of apple cider vinegar that enables the bones to release the marrow and produces a nicer broth. So I'll bring you back tomorrow whenever this is done cooking and we're getting ready to get it canned. Okay, so it's the next day. We had this um, broth simmering overnight, so I think about 18 hours that it simmered. This pot I've already uh, strained, not strained, but I've dipped out all of the chicken necks, onion, celery that we used to season it. And we are going to strain this through a fine mesh strainer in just a few minutes. This one's still got all of the neck bones and everything in it. Now these two pots were the product of all of the chicken necks plus one um, chicken that we smoked yesterday. So I took the uh, all of the meat off of that chicken and then put the whole carcass about half in each pot. So there is a little bit of smoked bones in here as well that should add a really nice depth of flavor to our broth. So we're going to go ahead and get everything dipped out of this pot here. Um, just a note um, on this being really, really hot. Um, I turned this off as soon as I got up this morning, so it has cooled down for probably about an hour, so it's not simmering anymore, um, just so that I can handle it a little bit better without burning myself. Now I will dip everything into this colander so that any broth that drains off of chicken and vegetables in here will um, be able to be added back to the pot. Now you could certainly go through these neck bones and try to pick all the meat out and use it for something. This is just going to mostly go to the dogs today.
just let that drain for a few minutes so that all the broth comes down. We'll pour that back into the pot. From there, this broth is going to need to be um, strained and put into the refrigerator so that it can um, cool and all of the fat come to the top. You don't want a canned broth that's got a lot of fat in it because it can mess up your seal. We'll scoop all of the fat that rises to the top and um, solidifies after it gets cold. Then we'll bring this broth back to a boil, get it into our pressure canner. Um, for broth, you do need to pressure can um, quarts for 25 minutes and uh, pints for 20 minutes. For straining this broth, I'm just going to use a fine mesh strainer. So there's all the bits that you don't want in your broth, just to make it look a little bit nicer. Now, if you want an even clearer broth, you can use like a milk filter, but I'm okay with some sediment from the chicken being in there. I just don't want all of these little maybe bits of bone or fat or anything in my broth. Now this broth is going to go into the refrigerator um, until it cools and all of the fat comes to the top. All right, we're back today. Our broth has been in the refrigerator overnight and we're ready to skim the fat off the top um, and then we're going to get it canned. So let's get started. And you can see how the fat has come to the top on this broth. And it's pretty easy to get off once it's gotten cold. Some of our broth may be a little bit thin because a lot of times really good bone broth completely congeals. This is a little jelly like but not completely gelled. <laughs> This over here looked more gelled. So we're gonna go ahead and get this scooped off. Honestly, the stuff in these buckets looks like it didn't quite get cold enough overnight. It was so warm when I put it into the refrigerator. Stick this bucket back into the refrigerator while we can the first couple of gallons out of the jugs that are a little bit colder where I can get the fat off a little bit better. All right, so we've got the broth in a big pot, heating it back up to the boiling point. I've got my pressure canner out. My pressure canner requires three quarts of water in the bottom, so this is our last quart. I also put a splash of white vinegar into my water to help prevent water stains on the actual pressure canner and the jars. 
So this will be heated just till you start to see a few little bubbles in it, not to the boiling point, but just getting that water really warm, probably up to about 170, 180 degrees. Okay, so we have our broth almost up to a boil now. I've just taken all of my jars out of the oven. I heated those to 220 degrees for about 10 minutes. Now, with pressure canning, it is not imperative that your jars be sterilized. You do have to sterilize jars with water bath canning, but with pressure canning, they just need to be clean. But it's nice to have hot jars when you're gonna be putting hot liquid into them to prevent any chance of shattering. Also with this broth, I only seasoned the chicken whenever I put it into roast. So I never added any salt or anything to this uh, broth. So to each of our little pint jars that we're using today, I'm going to put a half a teaspoon of salt in with there just for flavor. So I'm going to turn our heat down because this is almost boiling. It's bubbling a little bit. We're going to go ahead and get the salt put into our jars. Now my pressure canner will hold 18 small mouth pint jars. If they're wide mouth, it will only hold 16. This is just plain sea salt that I'm adding. I will um, can some quarts of this as well. But we're gonna start off with the pints because I can get a little bit extra into my canner with that. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and start filling these jars. You're gonna to wanna to leave one inch of head space at the top of your jar. And again, I've just got clean lids. They're not sterilized since we're pressure canning. We'll go ahead and get that into the canner that's heating up over here. You definitely need to have a canning funnel instead of just trying to ring your jar. This makes life a lot easier. When you're putting your lids on, they should be finger tight. Now when I'm pressure canning, I always use brand new lids. I recycle my rings, but for pressure canning, definitely new rings. But anytime I pressure can, the lid that comes off that jar is sealed so tight to it, it usually bends it just a little bit to get it off. So you definitely don't want to try to reuse those lids. And even lids that I've water bath canned with, I usually don't reuse any lids with pressure canning. The water bath lids I'll just use again for water bath canning. One thing I did want to point out is wipe the rim of your jar with a little bit of vinegar before placing the lid on it. Oftentimes you'll get a few drops of the broth on that lid when you move the um, funnel and that helps you get a better seal. So we'll go ahead and continue this process and I'll bring you back as soon as we fill up our canner. All right, so here's our nine jars on the bottom. Technically, I can fit 10 in there, but they're squeezed so tight together, I'm afraid that they'll jiggle around and break. So we're just gonna stick with the nine. We're gonna put in our second tray and get it loaded up with nine more quarts of the broth. Okay, so our canner's loaded up. We're gonna go ahead and get our lid on there. There's little arrows on your canner that shows you where to put it on. I'm 
make sure you check your seals and everything ahead of time. So I've already checked over this camera. We're going to turn this around where I can see the pressure gauge this direction. And we're going to go ahead and get this temperature heat turned up. We're going to wait till we start seeing a lot of steam come out of this uh, vent here. It should be a solid stream. Once that happens, we're going to vent it for 10 minutes. And then we will put our little cap on top of that. Um, I'll bring you back once we're ready. All right, so you can see that we have a nice steady stream of steam coming out of our vent. We're gonna go ahead and put on the timer for 10 minutes. All right, it's been 10 minutes with this venting. I'm trying to change angle so you can see that steady, heavy stream coming out of the vent. Also, our little pressure that, um, regulator has popped up. So we're ready to go ahead and get the cap on this thing. Now we're gonna watch for the pressure to rise, and this does take a few minutes, but we're going to get up to 11 pounds of pressure based on our um, altitude. Check your canning book for what pressure you should be canning at based on your altitude. But ours will be 11 pounds of pressure. So once this comes up to 11 pounds of pressure, we're going to can these pints of bone broth for 20 minutes. All right, we're almost at 11 pounds of pressure. I do keep my heat pretty high while I get my pressure canner up to temperature or up to pressure. Once it hits that 11 pounds of pressure, though, I adjust my heat down and it takes probably just below medium to maintain that 11 pounds of pressure. So you can see it's pretty much there now. We're just gonna turn our heat down a little bit on this so we don't keep climbing. And we're gonna go ahead and get our timer set. Right now, we're at 11 pounds of pressure, so 20 minutes. We've completed the 20 minutes at 11 pounds of pressure. Um, at this point, I just turned the heat off of the pressure canner, and this needs to come back down to normal pressure on its own. Don't mess with any of the valves, just let it sit. And once it comes down to pressure, once this little gauge pops down uh, and you're back down to zero here, you're free to take the cap off and then take the lid off and remove your jars. All right, so our pressure gauge is now down to zero, but we still have this little valve over here that's popped up and, then, and you can hear it releasing pressure slowly. So until that goes back down, we're gonna leave this alone for another few minutes. This has been probably about 15 minutes so far since we moved our pressure canner off the heat and are just letting it come back down to normal pressure on its own. If you have wide fluctuations in your pressure, that's when you can get a lot of siphoning out of your jar, so you definitely want this to come down to normal pressure on its own without you opening it or moving any valves around. All right, we're completely down to no pressure on the canner and get the lid removed. Make sure when you take it off, point it away from you because that steam will come up and can definitely burn you. And you'll need one of these to get your jars out of the canner because they're very hot. They look perfect. No siphoning that I can see at this point. Most of the time, they'll start sealing really quickly when you take them out of the canner. That vacuum forms on them and you'll hear your can start popping or lid start sucking down and popping. All 
All right, that's our first rack. Down. Very good looking broth. There they go, starting to seal. Some of these lids felt a little bit loose. I was just tightening them. All right, so for our batch of quarts, I've done a half a teaspoon of just plain sea salt, and I'm actually gonna add a half a teaspoon of some smoked salt to these jars just for a little added flavor. So one teaspoon of salt for quart jars is pretty typical on most canned items. I didn't want it to be overpowering with the smoky flavor, so we did, I'm doing half and half. All right, so we've got this broth. It came up to a boil and I turned it down because I wasn't ready for it. So it's just barely under a boil right now. We're gonna go ahead and load up these jars. I've got my pressure canner over here with the water heating again. I did add a little bit of water back to it to get to the three quart amount since some of it evaporated in the pressure canning process that we just went through with the pints. So this will actually come out a little bit darker with the smoked salt in it. Same thing with these jars. I had them in the oven at 220 for about 15, 20 minutes. So technically they're sterilized, but you don't have to have sterilized jars for pressure canning. Mainly I did that to heat them up since we're putting hot liquid into them. Same with the pints. You want an inch of head space at the top. Clean your rim with a little bit of vinegar. Finger tight. And into the canner. All right, so we've got the canner filled with our seven quarts of broth. We're gonna go ahead and get the lid on this. Now, the thing about quarts, you can only fit seven quarts in your canner. Um, and you can't double stack with this particular canner on quartz. It's not tall enough. So that's why I like doing the pints because I can get 18 pints in one canning, which is nine quarts, as opposed to if I use quart jars, I can only get seven quarts. But I do like to have some quarts put up for making soups. The pints work really well anytime I'm cooking some vegetables and I just want to boil them in some chicken stock. So. Let's get this next batch going. We vented the steam for 10 minutes now and we're gonna go ahead and get our cap on to the vent. Now these are quart jars as opposed to pints. So the only difference here is we're gonna bring our temperature or pressure up to 11 pounds and these will process for 25 minutes rather than just 20 minutes. All right, we got the quart jars and the pressure canner down to down to normal pressure. So we're gonna go ahead and get this lid off.
they look good. Again, no evidence of any significant siphoning. We have one pint short of seven gallons, so this turned out to be a great batch of stock. Everything looks good. Everything is sealed. I do recommend removing your lids before storage so they don't corrode. You can go ahead and get these washed up and they'll be good for use in the future. Removing your lids or your rims has no bearing on the seal. This is pressure sealed on here and it's not going to come off. So we'll get all these jars wiped down and cleaned up and they're ready for storage.